Namaste everyone. In today's video, we're going to focus on Muni Patanjali's Yoga Sutra 4.32. Now, in this particular Yoga Sutra, Muni Patanjali is helping us to understand how the guna balance is restored and how the guna stop evolving through the Dharma Megha Samadhi process and why this is a very important facet of the backward counter evolution of the two elements of Purusha and Prakriti. So let's take a good look at the sutra, start breaking it up word by word and understanding what exactly it means when it says that the gunas start to go back into their state of balance. So the sutra itself goes Tatah krithartanam parinam krama samaptir gunanam Alright, so this is the sutra itself now let's take a look at each of the words and start to break them up step by step. The first word here is tataha, which means from that. Then comes the next word, which is krithartha. Okay, a pretty important word here. Krithartha, krita means that which is accomplished and artha means that which is the purpose of. So here it's saying that the purpose has been accomplished. So both the words combining together to give us a compound word indicating that the purpose has been accomplished. Then we come to the next word which is Parinam. And Parinam is the changes or the transformations. And then we come to Kram. Krama means a particular sequence or a process. After that, we come to Samapti, which means the finish or the end. And the final here word here, which is Guna, which is talking about the three Gunas, the fundamental Gunas of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Alright, so now that we have learned all about these different practices, let's take a look at what do these words stand for and how do they combine to form a meaning of the Sutra. So essentially the sutra is saying that from that pretty much limitless knowledge and understanding, the completely omniscient knowledge of the Dharma Megha Samadhi, there is the termination of the process of the evolution of the gunas. So balance of the gunas gets restored and therefore the purpose of the entire practice of yoga has now been accomplished. So this is a really, really important sutra if you look at it because it's telling us mission accomplished. Basically it's saying we did the thing, we did it and it's kind of indicating to us that now the process of yoga is really starting to come to a complete halt or to a hold. So why is this really, really important for us to understand? Now, one of the most important things we learned in the Dharma Megha Samadhi is that eventually the sanskaras as well as the kleshas go away because of which a very deep viveka khyati and even more than that, a limitless knowledge of understanding is established. And due to this, what begins to happen is one is able to see the clear difference between the Purusha as well as the Prakriti or the Chitta. And this ability to see and observe clearly, like the Vishesha Darshan we were talking about, allows it to see the separateness. And this separateness then, you know, kind of leads you to the Mula Prakriti level. And this Mula Prakriti is essentially where the Gunas are not disturbed, they're in complete balance. An element of Purusha, the Purusha Tattva, activates them and then they start evolving. But if you go backward to the point where the Mula Prakriti was Prakriti, Purusha was separate, and not only do you understand that intellectually, you experience it as well, then there is no further need for the Gunas to be out of balance. Because as we had discussed even in some previous sutras, all of this bhoga is being undertaken to return to the state of yoga and to go back to the differentiated states and to know Purusha from Prakriti. So if that is the case and if that's what's happening in this case, then of course it automatically means that for Prakriti to be separate, Purusha to be separate, the gunas which are pretty much causing the evolution of Prakriti would need to be back in balance. Now, when we look at it in the Sankhya theory, we understand that for anything to be completely activated, 
right for anything to be completely active requires a certain amount of um, movement of activation of the presence of the latent potentiality of the purusha and therefore it becomes active and the gunas go out of balance but for them to come back to balance all that entire process needs to stop both need to dissociate and um, you know the guna uh, progression needs to go backwards and be completely restored now here's the most important thing that we need to really really focus on this is a process that only the prakritic realm can go backwards into because purusha stays immutable and consistent but the chitta the prakriti the gunas which are responsible for evolution will also now be responsible for counter evolution because change can really only be effected in the prakritic realm so this is something that we need to pay attention to otherwise we might think that some changes are also happening in the purusha which is leading to this uh, state of understanding and also as we have learned before sanyog this illusion of the meeting of the purusha and the prakriti is not real so we consider it sanyog and we think it's real and that's why we fall into a delusion of avidya which then keeps us in that loop of birth and death and prevents us from re releasing the kleshas and so i'm very well aware that the, these last few sutras might be a little bit abstract they might sound like a little heavy because of so many terms being involved but it's because this is really reaching the culmination the mission accomplished point of the yoga sutras and so it's taking all the concepts we've learned into account and applying them in this one moment so i would highly recommend if this is the video that you're watching directly if this is your first video please do watch the rest of the yoga sutra series because only then will this video make a lot of sense to you and will you be able to understand the progression and the journey that we've been on so far so that is basically the reason why dharma mega samadhi is so important and why truly there is a guna samapti and the process goes backwards and also over here the word krithartha is referring to that yogi which has really accomplished this purpose and reached this far in the process of the yoga sutras and also in the experiential process of yoga So I hope you found this video easy to follow and very easy to digest. We tried to break it down as much as we could in this particular sutra, but of course we cover it in much more detail in our classes, courses and workshops. So if you'd like to join in, please feel free to click the link in the description to join us for our classes. Apart from that, please do give this video a big thumbs up and also don't forget to share with your friends and family. Drop your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to our channel so you can stay tuned for any further updates and all our further upcoming classes. Now, we look forward to seeing you in the next video, course, class or workshop. Until then, take care, keep practicing, keep studying the yoga sutras and we're going to see you in the next one. Namaste.